The next step after drilling the holes in the rotors on the fixture on the mill is to set the pins. Notice that the pins are tapered. As I set them up on the bench, I put a red mark on the small end just so there was no way that I would flip them upside down by accident. If you look carefully at these pins, they have grooves pressed into the opposite end, into the large end. That's the end that needs to be sticking out of the rotor when you start to drive them in. The instructions also say to use Loctite on the pins when you put them in. That's Loctite red stud and bearing mount. Because I used lubricating oil when I was drilling the rotors for the pins, there's oil left inside the hole. So the best way to make sure that the hole is clean and ready to accept Loctite is to spray the hole out with some brake clean. Don't worry about any brake clean residue that gets inside the rotor because later on we're going to be driving out the freeze plugs on the end of the rotor to be able to get all the metal chips out from inside the rotor. After spraying brake clean, shoot a little bit of compressed air in the hole just to make sure that it's clear. The instructions also say to drive the pin into the rotor similar to driving a nail. There's two problems with that. One is that you run the risk of peening over the head of the pin as you're driving it with the hard face of a hammer. And the second problem is that you don't want to mar the surface of the rotor in the valley here with an errant hammer blow. It's easy enough to miss a nail and it's certainly easy enough to miss this pin as you're driving it in. What I'm using for a driver is just a piece of scrap aluminum that had a recess turned in the end of it on the lathe. So it's kind of a cup that keeps this punch, this temporary punch, from bouncing off the edge of the pin when I'm driving it in. So coat the edge of the pin with some Loctite red stud and bearing mount, and then proceed to drive the pin into the hole. Notice that I have the rotor sitting on a sturdy workbench with a soft hull folded over several layers beneath it. You don't want to mar the, the lobes on the rotor while you're hammering this pin in. When the hammering mandrel starts to touch the edges of the valley of the rotor, it's time to change over to a regular flat punch. I just ground this one recently so that I've got something good to be able to drive with. The instructions also state to make sure that the head of the pin is an eighth inch below the surface of the rotor. The fastest way to ensure that is to just take the edge of your caliper and put that on the pin and see how you're doing for height to the rotor face. I'm at about 68 thousandths deep. After a couple more tries I'm down 129, that's four thousandths over an eighth of an inch, no problem. Now it's time to peen over the hole so that there's no way the pin can back out. What I did is I took a socket head cap screw and ground a little bit of a taper in the end of it so that it can fit inside the hole and then as I hammer down on the hole the radius the edge or the chamfered edge actually of the ground part on the cap screw will peen the hole pretty nicely. A nice even peen and it won't run the risk of, of pulling any chips off the edge of the hole. If you look closely now at the pin pattern on that hole, it looks almost exactly like the factory pin that is peened over with some type of fixture in manufacturing. Notice how the pin is nice and smooth 
and it's even and it's crushed the hole down enough where there's no way that that pin's going to back out. Here's the factory single pin that was on the rotor. As you can see the pin pattern that's left by the ground cap screw is really similar to this so you know that if it works for a factory installation it's going to also work for the added pins. The final step in the process is to deburr the hole where you drove the pin in. I like to use a well-worn sanding drum on the Dremel to just touch the edges of the hole very lightly to make sure that there's no burrs that are sticking up that are going to end up getting caught on anything or touching the other rotor. Very, very light pressure, just a really light touch. Just barely brushing the edge of the hole is all you have to do. You don't have to grind a lot of meat out of this thing to be able to make sure that there's no burrs left. That feels nice and smooth. My finger doesn't catch anything on the edge of the hole, so that one's done. That's the right way to put pins into a 671 rotor.